Hey guys, Ruby here with Unorthodox Aquatics and today I'm going to talk to you guys about keeping largemouth bass in a home aquarium. So first off, just a few facts about the largemouth bass, which are these two guys right here. We're going to do a live feeding later also. Um, these guys are native to central and eastern U.S., uh, southern parts of Canada, and northern parts of Mexico as well. Uh, they're distinguished by that long body shape, olive green coloration, um, and also uh, a lateral stripe along the body, as you can see. And of course, a pretty dang large mouth. So let's take a closer look. This is a smaller one I've got in here. Now this is a 75 gallon tank. This is a uh, show tank essentially for my videos for uh, purposes like this to show you guys the tank. Um, it is uh, a 75 but a minimum of 100 even 120 gallons is recommended for uh, one to two smaller bass, and the bigger the better. Uh, a lot of people choose um, like 150 gallons up or low boy tanks uh, where these guys can have a larger of a footprint. I personally keep uh, the smaller bass in here for the videos. Typically it's just the sunfish that are in here full time. And then uh, I put the bigger guys back in the native pool pond, which I will show you guys later. So this is the show tank I have set up. Uh, notice it's kind of tangled with uh, wood and surface plants and rock, things like that. Um, these guys love when they have their natural uh, habitats mimicked in their tank. It uh, encourages feeding and breeding and uh, just so overall, I think better temperament from the fish uh, overall. So um, these guys love natural vegetation, wood, rock, uh, you know, things that just uh, look, uh, you know, nice. Black water, things like that makes for a really beautiful lake or riverscape in your tank. I see my bass have gotten a little shy over here. Now these guys get large and they are fast growers so make sure you have that appropriate size tank available and ready. Um, also when uh, doing uh, tank consideration consider their size and uh, their healthy healthy appetites. They are not very picky uh, and they will make a big mess. Um, a lot of people like to keep a bare bottom for ease of cleaning with these guys. Uh, this isn't a bare bottom, but they're like larger, uh, natural looking river stones, things like that, that, uh, you know, just look a little more natural, make the bass feel a little more at home and uh, the other native species, things like that. You may want to observe when first putting bass or native fish in a tank, uh, their behavior, especially if you choose to overstock, um, under or overstocking may be beneficial. Since these fish can be territorial, you may want to uh, just experiment with a couple fish and the scape, go from there. Um, if it is a little more uh, you know, uh, aggressive in there, you may want to um, add in some territories that these guys can claim. Although as you can see, uh, the pumpkin seeds and sunfish are kind of, uh, they're bigger assholes <laughs> in this tank, uh, but they don't really touch the bass. But the bass are a little more gentle and uh, nicer toward each other, uh, but they will chase those sunfish if they get too much in the way. So for filtration, right now I have an air stone running in there. I do that a couple times a day. You may want to do that. Some bass like a little more uh, ornate of fish in general, like a little more higher oxygen level. But I do have an internal canister as well as a large um, sponge filter, 
which seems to uh, work this 55, 75 gallon sizes, uh, you know, good, but double filtration is also recommended for these guys or multiple modes because they do get a little more messy and um, they do eat a lot so that's definitely something to take into consideration as far as water changes go I would do maybe 25 percent weekly if you do overstock your tank a 50 percent weekly might do or 50 percent every week and a half or so so let's see what I've got going on as far as vegetation for this tank. So I've got plenty of surface plants. Um, I will also go and collect uh, lilies and natural things uh, from the environment that are legal. And also please make sure if you do keep largemouth bass, uh, make sure they are legal where you are. Um, because you can get in trouble uh, if the DNR catches you with native fish you're not supposed to have. And then we've got some uh, guppy grass and things like that. They love the vegetation in there. And also, you must, must, must have a lid. Here's mine. Uh, it's a screen top that the lights sit on top of. That's why they're kind of on there like that funny. But, um... Yeah, definitely these guys can be jumpers. They are in the black bass family, so careful about that. So now we are going to do a live feeding for these guys. Uh, that should be fun. Haven't fed them yet today, so uh, we will do that. And then we'll go take a look out and uh, check out the native pool pond I have established out in my garage. These guys can eat worms, small feeder fish, as long as they're healthy, cut up frozen fish like tilapia, shrimp, insects, small crustaceans, and some people even feed their larger bass uh, frozen or live mice. Okay, we are going to start by feeding them some earthworms. It might even take it right from me. <laughs> there we go. Don't want him to get my fingers. Just gonna throw in some rosy reds. There we go, that little bass is going after those. And all the fish really like those. It's fun to watch them eat. Very cool. So these big boys in the pool, I tried to feed them some worms, but I don't think they're very interested because they always have rosies in there available to them and minnows. But uh, let's spot some of these big guys in here. I don't know if you saw in my last video, but this is a casting net. I use as a lid. Oh, there's one of the big boys. Right here. I like to hide under this big log. There's a big boy. smaller ones in there also. They also like to hide in that. Okay. All right. the 
back. So here, I don't know if you guys watched my past uh, video on creating this pond, but we've got a DIY sump here with a lava rock. And then we've got also a 600 gallon per hour uh, pond pump running that. And then also another pond filter, that's that long canister thing. And that also has a UV sterilizer built in it. So that's kind of nice. There's a little bass right there. Seeking refuge under the wood. Well guys, thank you for stopping by. This has been Ruby with the Orthodox Aquatics. And this has been my little video on uh, how to keep largemouth bass in an aquarium or pool pond. Hope it's been helpful and I will see you guys next time. Check out my fish only fans if you like. That is uh, the Gypsy Mermaid. And uh, I'll throw a link in the description for you uh, if you'd like to check that out. And otherwise, you guys have a great day, and thanks for stopping by. See ya.